I want to talk about who's behind all the numbers that we discuss in this room every day. Nurses, doctors, and all the frontline medical workers, some sick and doing their job and isolated from their family. First responders, essential workers, DCF social workers, MBTA bus and train drivers, and many, many other public servants who, as always, did what they had to do in order to serve us, but in some cases suffered terrible loss as a result. Furloughed or laid off workers who, despite coming in early, working the extra shifts, now by no fault of their own, are left wondering when that job comes back. Everyone suffering under the fear of the unknown amid this pandemic. Everyone who sacrificed a wedding or major moment in life and went without holding their loved ones at the exact time they needed to be held the most. And everyone who lost a friend, a brother, a sister, a mom, or a dad. There are tens of thousands of you right now here in the Commonwealth who have either grieved or going through one of the hardest moments of your life. The toll this virus takes and continues to take on many of us is staggering. But the response, the fight, the millions of people who are doing what they have to do to push back has been brave and bigger. The retired medical workers who came back off the bench and straight into the COVID-19 ward the friends and family members who help one another overcome the fear of the unknown. The parents and guardians who overnight became educators and are still putting in full days working remotely and teaching their kids at home. There are so many examples of Massachusetts rising to this occasion and fighting back to list them all. Today, as we start the phased return to our new normal, we are going to ask people once again to rise to the occasion as we continue to fight this virus. Our collective success depends on everyone, government, the private sector, and especially individuals playing their part to move us forward. Today we lay out a roadmap to reopening Massachusetts while we continue to fight COVID-19. These two will be inseparable, getting back to work and fighting COVID until there's a medical breakthrough with treatments or a vaccine. And we cannot move forward unless we commit to continuing to slow the spread. To achieve that goal, reopening, while continuing to bring the fight every day, I tasked Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito to work with Housing and Economic Development Secretary Mike Keneally to bring together experts from across Massachusetts' diverse economy. They listened and they learned from hundreds of points of view. Local government leaders, nonprofits, labor leaders, and small and large employers, to name just a few. At the same time, Health and Human Services Secretary Mary Lou Sutters and Public Health Commissioner Monica Burrell consulted Massachusetts' world-class healthcare leaders and together, our administration developed this plan to move forward. We'll progress through four phases, opening more sectors of the economy and activities only when the public health data indicate it's appropriate to do so. Each phase will last at least three weeks, but may last longer if the public health data doesn't support moving forward. As I said earlier, COVID-19 has and will continue to take a toll here in Massachusetts. It remains up to all of us, government, the employer community, and most of all, the rest of us, as individuals, to continue to fight back against the virus, because that is the way we move forward through these phases. The report lays out not only which sectors of the economy are slated to open and when, but it lays out how businesses reopen while fighting the spread. And most importantly, this report lays out what individuals must do to enable us all to move through these phases. This effort will hinge fundamentally on personal responsibility. 
As everyone knows, we're not helpless in this fight. We all have roles to play, and you have proven time and time again that you can play them. We continue to ask everyone to do four things. Cover your nose and mouth when you can't distance yourself. The science is clear. Simple face coverings prevent the spread of this disease incredibly effectively. Wash your hands and wash surfaces often. This one needs no explanation. Keep your distance. Again, we all know this one by now, but it's as important today as it's ever been, and more so as we start this reopening process. The more we stay about six feet apart from one another whenever possible, the more we stop the spread. And lastly, stay vigilant for symptoms and stay home if you think you're sick. We all know this one by now, too. Alone, each of these four things can be highly effective at slowing and killing the virus. We have the scientific research now and makes that much clearer. But together, these four things are exponentially more powerful. And we are asking the private sector to support their employees, to be creative, to support working remotely whenever possible, and to follow the guidance that our team developed to prevent further spread. Sticking with these critical tasks is everyone's responsibility, and how well we do them will dictate how well we, op we open Massachusetts. State and local governments will continue to step up testing capabilities alongside our community tracing program. Testing and tracing will remain integral to getting ahead of this virus, containing it, and a critical part of our ability to keep the economy moving. As I've said before, we have all been doing our jobs to fight back. And as a result, positive case rates are moving in the right direction and hospitalizations are down. The public health metrics that guide this process mean it's possible to reopening manufacturing facilities and construction sites effective today. And we're permitting more sectors of our economy to open effective May 25th and others on June 1st under phase one. Lieutenant Governor Polito will talk more about how this report lays out new rules of the road for each of those industries and specifically the thing business, things businesses need and must do in order to reopen while effectively fighting the virus. These first steps, manufacturing and construction, provided these businesses follow the guidance we've developed, have limited face-to-face -face and customer interactions. And many similar operations open now under the essential order have been responsibly balancing operating and fighting the virus as well. Starting a week from now, we're permitting office space to reopen to 25% of its capacity, except in Boston. On May 25th, retail establishments may also offer curbside service and some personal services such as barbershops and hair salons may reopen, provided they follow the new rules in this report. Places of worship will also be permitted to open with guidelines in place starting today. A number of outdoor facilities and recreation activities may also resume starting a week from now, as well as in accordance with those new rules. And our healthcare facilities will be permitted to begin seeing more patients on an agreed upon schedule over the next two weeks. I wanna make clear that the reopening advisory board and the team made every effort to be as clear and direct as possible when it comes to the new requirements these businesses must follow. But this is something no one's ever done before. Shutter, then reopen everything, from a beachfront to a factory floor with standards in place to slow the spread of a highly contagious virus. So I ask everyone to keep this in mind. This guidance asks people to change behaviors, and it changes the way some of our favorite places look and feel. This is not permanent. At some point, there will be treatments and ultimately a vaccine. But for the foreseeable future, everyone needs to continue to do the right things to bring the fight to the virus so that we can continue to move forward. Today, the Department of Public Health also updated the Stay at Home Advisory to reflect this stage of the reopening process. The new 
Safer at Home Advisory instructs everyone to stay home unless they're headed to a newly opened facility or activity, and it also advises those over the age of 65 and those with underlying health conditions to stay home except for absolutely necessary trips for things like health care and groceries. This new advisory is important. As we enter this phased reopening, it's important to remember that everyone is safer at home. The virus will be with us throughout the reopening process, and everyone's required to cover their nose and mouth if you can't maintain six feet of distance from those around you. Everyone has a responsibility to wash their hands, distance themselves from others, and be vigilant about symptoms so that you can, if you, so that you can stay home and you should stay home if you feel sick. How well everyone does these things will determine how well we move into later phases. You've all heard me say that we can't afford to take one step forward only be forced to take two steps back. I know we'd all prefer to believe that the virus is less serious now and that it's behind us. It's nice outside. I understand the weeks feel like months. I think we understand all of this. Collectively, we have flattened the curve and avoided the spike in cases that would have broken our health care system. But if we don't keep up the fight and don't do the things that we all know we have to do and know we can do, we run the risk, we run the risk of creating a second spike in the fall. We've asked a lot of the people of the Commonwealth since this all began. And thankfully, millions and millions of people have answered the call and played their part. Once again, people need to be vigilant, they need to be careful, and they need to understand the role that they can play themselves as we continue to bring this fight to the virus. It's how we move forward together.